हम लाते हैं टॉप न्यूज आपके फेवरेट टॉक शोज और अनलिमिटेड एंटरटेनमेंट सिर्फ यूट्यूब पर अगर आपने अभी तक हमारा चैनल सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया तो अभी सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल आइकॉन को क्लिक करके हमारी लेटेस्ट वीडियोस के बारे में अपडेट जानें। सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और हम आपको लिए चलेंगे आपकी फेवरेट वीडियो की तरफ इन सेपर्चुनिटीज to Pakistan India other countries mm-hmm. in the commonwealth they should walk the walk rather than simply talking the talk and change rules around uh, immigration change rules in relation to students going to the UK change rules in relation to entrepreneurs investing in the uh, UK in the meantime um we're on this mission uh, my deputy mayor Rajesh Agarwal is here along with uh, various business leaders we've brought to uh, uh, Pakistan mm. Islamabad Karachi Lahore and they'll be meeting Uh, people here to see if we can do business together i want to know whether you would actually play a role in bringing india and pakistan together you're in a unique position and you've just come from india and we we you know we have a lot of tension with india you know a lot of people say about me it's a compliment i think not a criticism i'm very ambitious and uh, i try and do many things that previous mayors haven't done even though i'm not going to pretend uh, that i have the power Uh, to uh, solve what's been an issue for the last 70 years but i do say this uh, a lot of the uh, indians i met uh, over the last 3 days have uh, a lot of friendship and kinship for pakistan mm-hmm. uh, and uh, a lot of the pakistanis that i meet on a regular basis have a lot of friendship and kinship for india mm-hmm. in london mm-hmm. uh, some of the best friends are londoners of indian origin and pakistani origin you saw in the final of the cricket india versus pakistan yes. the fantastic speech that virat kohli made after india lost the magnanimity people to people contact was never an issue i think it's more government well, to government well sometimes yes. we can put pressure on, on those in positions of power and influence one of the key things i believe in in my administration is people power right. the power of the people to influence my policies and similarly we can influence the policies of governments around the world you know there's one other question and i must ask it because there are journalists also in the audience is that terrorism is something that we share also britain has its own sets of problems especially london lahore has seen a lot of terror attacks what more can both countries do together to eradicate terrorism or combat terrorism so L- london has faced four terror attacks uh, yes. this year one of the things i'm in charge of is uh, security and it's worth reminding ourselves what the motivation intentions and objectives of terrorists are they want to kill and injure but they want to terrorize us divide societies and drive a wedge between us and we've got to take steps to keep ourselves safe invest in police in make sure we have uh, the members of the public have in confidence in the police to report things that are suspicious provide it in, in intelligence but the best antidote to the terrorists is to continue to be united continue to practice the values and liberties we have and to make sure you know to make sure we don't change uh, who we are i've just come from uh, alamek bals at tome just think of the poetry of uh, one of the founding fathers of uh, pakistan the idea that uh, today's terrorist is trying to stop artists performing poets writing uh beggar's belief and one of the best things we can do in response to these uh, terrorists is not just stay united but to make to go about our business like we do so now we have the surprise guest his name rhymes with yours we have with us somebody who's an american and he actually wanted to become an architect and now he is a billionaire he is a business tycoon he is working in america at the moment he owns nfl's jacksonville jaguar and uk's fulham football club that's why we were talking about sports he owns flex and gate which is one of the largest global automotive parts industry and his name made it to the forbes list as america's richest sports team owner in 2016 we have with us right now shahid khan okay good morning sir how are you first tell us apart from the fact that your name rhymes with his name and that you both don't like uh, trump's tweets what do you have in common <laughs> well uh, we have a lot in common <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um um we care about London obviously uh you know I've got business interests there I've gotten to know Sadiq and uh, he's somebody I'm really proud to know And what brings you to Pakistan I know you're from Lahore your brother's been driving you around this is really your hometown 
Um, are you looking at opportunities here, maybe? Because law is open too. Yes, uh, <laughs> it is open. Yep, it is. <laughs> you know, I'm a lohari through and through. So, uh, and you know, I have a mother who lives here. Uh, it's, you know, what I think from my viewpoint. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity, but. Uh, and there's a huge amount of potential. So I want to learn as much as I can and uh, see what I can do to help. Well, let me float an idea because we're talking about sports and peace. What about a football team with Indians, Pakistanis, and Londoners playing in it? Yeah. <laughs> they like the suggestion. Um, you know, I love football, and the reason I aspired to own one was I wasn't talented enough to play. So, <laughs> I've, I've got another question for Shahidabai, which is, which is, you may not know this, but to own an NFL team is a big deal. It's very difficult to do. Many, many uh, uh, people who, with wealth have tried to own one and not succeeded because the other owners get a say. Uh, so the question to Shahidabai is, how, how did he manage to be the first a non-white, and we should be really proud of this, he's the first non-white owner of an NFL team. <laughs> and the, the, the obvious question is, I mean, how did you do it? Well, um, I think um, there was somebody who really became president of the country and aspired to own an NFL team and was unsuccessful. Um, <laughs> uh, it's true, it's oh, true. It's absolutely true. So um, what's unique it's a partnership, um, and three-fourths of the people have to vote you in. So, and it's, it's not about the money. Uh, NFL goes back to 1890, uh, and really you have to be in America to kind of understand why NFL is so powerful, uh, more than all the sports combined. Now, what I did was, I saw it, I loved it, and I was on a 10-year journey. Mm -hmm. um, and I was not successful, but I went out, met the owners. A um, lot of them really had questions, and um, they would have concerns. It was something they were uncomfortable with, and I think uh, getting to know them, and then when you find an opportunity, they feel comfortable with doing that. Well, let me ask you a little bit of a controversial question, which uh, the organizers may not like, but I'm a journalist, I can't help myself. Mm -hmm. So what is it like living in Trump's America? Is it any different from Obama's America for you? Uh, no. Uh, I think, uh, really, Trump's America, you know, if you look at his approval rating, it's almost historic low. Um, and we finally got tax reform done, but really, not much has happened. And with some of the polarizing, the hateful rhetoric, uh, he's not going to be effective. I mean, Americans are, it's an immigrant country. They want somebody who pulls them together, not divides them. This was the, I mean, what credit you have to uh, give him is that, uh, you know, he sensed the right time and, um, uh, you know, where the politics of hate division worked. Mm -hmm. uh, most Americans now, what they've seen, I think we've had a couple of elections, New Jersey, mm -hmm. Virginia, mm -hmm. you know, they were very, very unsuccessful. For, well, uh, Sadeh Khan Sahib, you went through a very, also, uh, a hateful campaign. You faced one uh, with Zach Goldsmith, who's a former brother-in-law of Imran Khan's. Now that it's over, can you bring back some harmony, some kind of, you know, reconciliation? in some ways? With Zach. With Zach. And maybe will you be meeting Imran Khan on this trip? So for those that, for those, <laughs> so for those, for those that didn't follow the, the campaign, the, the, the campaign against me was very uh, negative. Uh, uh, I'm a firm believer in, in being confident in, in yourself, whether you're playing sports, yeah. uh, whether you're involved in a political campaign. And so I, I had a vision and a plan for my city, uh, and we were positive. We, we had lots and lots of things we could attack him about, we could have been negative, we could have used so many things against him. But there's a great Michelle Obama say, which is, uh, when they go low, you go high. And uh, we, um, you know, and it's how, it's, it's who we are, how we've been raised. When we're playing sports, we're not going to hit below the belt when you're boxing. 
when you're playing football and the other guy's really talented, you won't take him out of the game by sliding him. That's not how we've been raised. And so he, he may have been using every tool in the toolkit mm -hmm. and tools that weren't in the toolkit to try and win the campaign. And by the way, it was not just him, it was his party and a number of others were involved. And we were very upbeat. And the good thing is this, the reason why we should be optimistic is the city of London, the people of London rejected the politics of fear. The people of London rejected a campaign seeking to divide our city. And I'm not, I'm not proud of it in myself, I'm proud of my city that Londoners cho chose hope over fear but and unity over division. And look, these things happen in life. You could be in any job and somebody tries to take you out, whether it's uh, NFL. What did Shaibai do? He, did, he persevered. So three quarters of other owners have to vote for you. And you've heard from him, the president of the USA he couldn't get elected to that, to be an owner. But Shaibai persevered, persevered, persevered. That's what we did, we persevered. But were you disappointed with Imran Khan's role during the campaign? Well, no, the fact that Imran supported Zach Goldsmith's Imran's choice. Uh, he's free to support whoever he wants, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm that's a very, That's very democratic of you. Well, I'm a winner and I won. Well, <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, the phrase I used is uh, unlocked potential. There is so much potential here. You've got so many young people. I see that as an opportunity, not a, not a, not a challenge. Uh, I see the enthusiasm of the youth. Look at this, look at this theatre. I was told that many, many, many more wanted to come, but for reasons that you know, uh, they weren't allowed to uh, be here. That enthusiasm and appetite for art and learning is a source of inspiration to uh, us. And so, look, I I'm happy in my job. I've got the best job in the world, so I've got no interest in, uh, in doing any other jobs. So, Shad, what about you? What have you, th have you thought about it? <laughs> well, um, I would, um, uh, you know, I would echo the same sentiment that uh, I, I had a great, obviously, foundation here in the U.S., I mean, in Pakistan, and then I was fortunate to end up in the U.S., and it was a great, great combination. To okay, there's a related question, and yeah. I want both yeah. of you to answer that. The question is, if you were born in Pakistan, which I think you were, definitely, yes, I was. and grew up here instead of London and you in America, how do you think that your life would have unfolded, and what position in the government would you have had in that case? I think that's mostly for you. Um. So, look. I was born in London and uh, I've had a great life. I mean, uh, you heard about the, my humble beginnings, but we were always happy. And my mum and dad, uh, my mother and father, uh, had a very inspiring work ethic, always working hard, uh, and that rubbed off on the uh, children. And um, I think one of the things about the London promise is work hard, help in hand, fulfill potential. My observation of Pakistan is lots of people working hard, but there's not enough help in hand. Mm. And as a consequence, many talented people can't fulfill their potential. In all walks of life, whether it's sports, whether it's business, whether it's uh, politics, whether it's arts. And that to me is heartbreaking because think about the missed potential. Maybe one of those people whose potential wasn't fulfilled could have a cure for cancer. Maybe one of those people could become a very successful chief executive and create lots and lots of jobs, wealth and prosperity. Maybe one of those people could be writing poetry that will inspire the next uh, generation. And I think you know, any country, mine included, that doesn't fulfill the potential of their young people is, uh, is making a big mistake. Shaya Khan Saab, do you think that if you had not left, you would have become what you have become today, a billionaire, and you really did chase your dream, didn't you? And America allowed it, despite Trump. Um, yeah, you got to remember, I mean, Trump, he hasn't even been in office a yes. year. Okay, so. I've been there a long time, almost 50 years. So, um, and there are certain values about America which uh, one person isn't going to change. Um, they are absolutely inherent and hardwired, so to speak. And but, you really believe that that would not change, that that would not uh, maybe at least throw a spanner in the wheels? I Trump's think, presidency? I think uh, Trump, what's obviously immigration is lower. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to have to increase because you can't find people and for the country to grow, it needs immigration. Well, I have the last question for all of you, uh, for both of you. You have visited Pakistan many times, but what was the best thing that you liked about Pakistan? Pakistanis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, the, the, the warmth, the hospitality, the friendship, the, uh, the love, uh, it's just phenomenal. And, uh, you know, my family, I'm, my family are in Pakistan. Uh, I feel that, that some of you I've, I've never met before. I may not meet tonight. I'll try and jump down and meet you. Uh, uh, but I feel your affection and your warmth and your support. And um, Pakistan is a Pakistan's greatest asset. Well, what about you apart from the people? Is there something that you crave? when you're in America to eat or to see or? Um, I mean, I, am, I love Pakistan and um, it, to me, obviously, I have family here. And uh, so it's great for me to come back, reconnect. And, um, you know, I went to school not too far from here, Cathedral High School. So Where did you go to school? The cathedral. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then FC College. So, um, I mean, you know, my roots are here and uh, so, you know, I just end up at the airport and I'm one of them, so. Well, I know that you have a very, very yeah. busy schedule and I know the mayor of London has yeah. a very busy schedule here in Lahore. I hope you enjoy the rest of thank your day you. and the rest of your trip. Thank you so much for giving us the first interview and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you all for coming. Okay, That's you. it for today.